and welcome to another video on Spot On with Shruti. Well, as I was uh, contemplating on making a video for today's class, I came across this one line from Einstein and here I quote, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. Curiosity, that is correct. If we aren't curious enough, do you think we will have a good idea or comprehension of subjects and topics that we are learning, whether in math, science, or any other subject? No, right? So on today's video, we are going to address curiosities of students, questions that they have asked me during sessions, and curiosities of students that are watching and viewing, and any learner out there who has some questions. Today's topic and curiosity is going to be the number, actually, the irrational number, E. Yes, the E irrational number that we see on our calculators. And if you do go grab your calculator and take a note, press that button E on the calculator. You will get a value of 2.718, so on and so forth, and it continues never-endingly. So yes, it is an irrational number, popularly known as Euler's number. But ever wondered or curious as to why the value of E is 2.718? Where is it coming from? Why is it called E and no, no other alphabet? What is the reason? You know, stuff like that, curiosities. So let's go ahead and put our curiosities to rest. Let's address and understand what is the connection of this value of E with even our compound interest problems. So if you're curious enough, and you want to know how, then follow me along on this video and you will find out. All right, I'll see you. Bye-bye. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what we are going to understand is where is this value of E coming from? So, of course, if you key in uh, the number on your calculator, you will get something like E equal to 2.718. To so on and so forth. It keeps going on as a non-terminating decimal. Also, there is a connection between the natural log button ln and E value. This is nothing but your standard logarithm, but the value of the base is going to be E value, which is the number that you see right here. That is the idea of what this is about. Also, once again, E is referred to as Euler's number. Why? Because Euler was a scientist who came up with the refinement of the value of E. Although E actually refers to exponent. But the question still remains, how do we get to 2.7182 and so on and so forth? What is going on here? So for that, let's begin with an example. So let's continue here. So for that, I would like for you to understand and think of it this way. Let's say we have one dollar and we want to, this money <coughs> doubles every year. So let's see how the time period, what happens to the money as we go on from year one to two and three. So let's say year First, we start off with dollar one. So obviously, year one, we are going to get two dollars. Year two, we will have four dollars. Year three, we will have eight. And year four, and so on and so forth, our money value keeps increasing. So basically, what are we noticing here? We are noticing that our money value is going up or doubling every time interval, every one year. Now tell me one thing, here I ask you a question. Is it that the end of the year, only the last day of the year is when our money is doubling? Or is it progressively growing every single day until that one year time period is completed? We are only checking the value at the last day of the year. We are not checking the value every single day, right? So that is a key idea for us to understand what is going on in terms of growth. E value or the E number is the growth that we see over a period of time or over che when checked over equal intervals of time. So E is nothing but has a 
a relation between the time periods. But let's get back to our situation right now. So what we notice is we're getting from $1, we went to $2, meaning a 100% growth rate. So we went from 1 plus 100% in the first year. Second year, we went from 1, we got 100% growth rate in two years. And this gave us $2, this gave us $4. Third, we are going to get in same 100% from the first dollar, and we are going to get an 8, and this continues. So basically, the idea here is if you increase the number of time periods, we get more money, right? Or equal interval of time, we're getting 100% growth. Now let's just tweak this a little bit. Let me just show this. We began with our first year. In one year, when we had the 100% increase, we started off with $1 to get $2, right? What if we split this 100% into two equal time periods going half a year? So every half a year, so we start off here zero and we have six months and then we have 12 months. This gives us 100%, right? And we are dividing this 100% into two equal time periods, meaning the first leg of first six months gets 50% and this gets 50%. So we kind of are spreading it out, all right? So instead of checking our money at the end of the year, we're going from $1 here to six months. In six months, we say we should have a 50%, right? So we get the $1 and plus the 0.5. So what is our total now? At the end of the six months, we have $1.5. Now, at the end of 12 months, what are we getting? We're getting that 1.5 plus the 50% on this 1.5, which is going to be 0.75. And you get a $2.25. So which value is giving you? It's the same one year time period, except that in the first one, you're only compounding or you're only checking your value at the end of the first year. On the second one, we have split our 100% in equal two equal intervals. So we have split it here as one plus 100% into two equal intervals to get our dollar value end of the year and we see the first year gives us two and the second year is giving us 2.25 similarly if you keep going like this over a quarterly rate like uh, instead of going six months every quarter then we end up with 2.61 dollars at the end of the first year starting off with one dollar here we are splitting each of our uh, our hundred percent into four equal time period growth, so 25% each. So here our equation becomes one plus 100%, four equal time periods for four times we are getting that growth rate. So if you keep going at this idea, you will notice that the more time periods you have, the more money you end up with for the same time span. So we come up with a generalized formula for defining this growth as 1 over n meaning n number of time periods raised to the power of n. Okay, so 1 represents a 100%. Okay, so if you split that 100% in equal intervals of time, you get a very large exponential growth. Now, I have a table where I have summarized the growth and a chart too. Here it is for your reference. Let me just split it up. So as you can see, let's first go through this chart. Here, if we split the $1 over half a year, you get a 2.25 at the end of the year. Same thing if you do a quarterly payment, $2.44 end of the year. And if you go monthly, per month, you get 2.61. And if you do this, Every single day, you get 2.71, which is more realistic. So this is how compound interest works, meaning what is this 2.71? Now we're getting close to our E value. So let's go to this chart. And if you will notice, as we increase the number of time periods for one time period, meaning across the board, you get $2. If you have two time periods, you get 2.25. If your N value, meaning 100 time periods, you get 2.7048, blah, 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 whatever. And as you keep increasing the time periods, the value of your growth 
is more nearing the same decimal digits. This value right here, this generalization right here is the E value. And that is how we get to the value of E as 2.718 and so on and so forth after the decimals. The key idea behind this concept is that 2.718 defines your growth rate, maximum growth rate, maximum growth that you will get for these many time periods and maybe more. I mean, does it stop after 2.718? Do these digits change? Yeah, sure, they will change at some given point of time. But if you're going to go, and I leave you with this thought, if you're going to go and put your money in a bank, and how many time possible time periods can you like, actually have even if you broke it to the level of every second it won't be more than what you're seeing on the chart here right so the, it won't be more you the maximum growth for your each dollar or each one person or each one virus that you're going to get is 2.718 it is going to double like that depending on the number of time periods that we've taken so hopefully you've liked the presentation and uh, have a better idea on the comprehension of the value of E being 2.718. And if you've liked it, do let me know and keep your emails coming. And if you want more sessions with me, please be sure to keep up your emails and get in touch with me. All right. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.